I am so excited because I'm going to show you how we grow one of my favourite plants, and that is lemongrass. Hi, I'm Debbie and welcome to Vintage Food Farm. Before we go and have a look at our lemongrass, I just want to show you what winter looks like in the beautiful tropics of far north Queensland, Australia. So it's a little bit hazy because people are burning their, their indoor fireplaces, but you can see that it is still very warm and very sunny and just beautiful. I don't know if you can see the smoke, but the smell of it is so relaxing. Okay, so we'll grab our gloves and our scissors and our hori hori. And let's go and have a look at this lemongrass. Even though it's the dry season, which is the colder season, it's still warm and it's still raining. You can hear there's a chicken in the background there getting ready to lay. So you can see as we pass this bed, this is a beaker, which is tong and spinach, which I cut right back. You can see how far I cut it back. And in a matter of weeks, it is massive again. So productive. And then here, everything's sort of mingled together, but we've got some longevity spinach and some Okinawa spinach. And these are Cape gooseberries. So we will get thousands, thousands and thousands of these Cape gooseberries. But this is the size of our lemongrass. And you can see that it's even going to seed there. It is huge. So you can grow lemongrass in drier areas, but the more water and the more sunlight and the more well drained they are, the bigger the bulb at the end of the lemongrass will be. I am also being very cautious that I don't put my hand on a snake. So you can see here, this branch has fallen down. This grass has fallen down. So these are all the seed heads on the end. Now, to be honest, I don't know if they will grow or not. Lemongrass does grow from seed, but I don't know whether these seeds are viable or not. But do you know what? We're gonna find out very soon. So when we get into the base of the lemongrass, and you can see all this dry stuff here, that just pulls out, just like that. Because it's dry, it's no longer sharp. And you can use that as garden mulch, but you can also use it for your nesting boxes for your chickens to lay their eggs in. It's really handy. And it smells so beautiful that the chicken coop smells like lemongrass instead of chicken poo. So you can just see the amount that is growing in this garden bed alongside Galangal which is also very vigorous, so they, they're not taking over each other. And then in here is heaps of the stuff that we can use. The beauty of it being in a raised garden bed is that it's so much easier to harvest and also it's got much better drainage. So with the Hori Hori, I'm just getting in between and just gently prying that away. So because I haven't harvested from this side in months and it's all grown back i've pulled off and cut off everything in the corner here so that then i can just reach in and pull out a piece of lemongrass but you sort of need to start it first so that it pulls out easily that bit hasn't got root on the end of it but that's still perfectly fine So now there's another piece. So if you have if you have a look at this piece, you can actually see that it's got roots on the end of it. So that becomes your next lemongrass plant. You just pull out one bit and put it in some water or plant it straight into a pot or into the garden even. And I'll show you over there where I've got some potted up. But that's how easy it is to propagate lemongrass. So now we'll go and cut these and clean them up and they will be ready 
to make a beautiful Vietnamese marinated pork chop tonight. So next we're going to cut and clean up the lemongrass so that it's ready to take into the kitchen for our dinner tonight. So we just want to cut these in like 25 to 30 centimetre lengths um, because anything longer than that is too fibrous. We're only using the absolute tip of the lemongrass stalk. We're going to save these leaves because we can use those as well. I've already said we can use them as mulch or as nesting material for the chicken's nesting boxes, but we can also use them to make um, like a, a rolled up bouquet garni type uh, lemongrass fragrance to put into soups, um, curries. You can even make a tea out of it. So I'll show you how we do that. Take off some of those outside leaves. So there we have our six beautiful stalks of fragrant lemongrass to take into the kitchen. So exciting. So next I'm going to show you how we don't waste these leaves and we can use them for cooking as well. So what we do is we actually leave those leaves to wilt overnight because right now they're quite sharp. And once they've um, wilted and softened, it's a lot easier to, um, to tie them up into a little ball. You can chop up the lemongrass leaves and you can put them into soups and everything, but, but you've got to get it out because it's so fibrous that it's not pleasant to eat. But if you tie it all up into just a little ball or a bow, um, the Vietnamese people do it in this most elaborate, beautiful wrapped shape, but just something that sticks together. Then like a bay leaf, you can put it into your meal, let the flavour all come out over the cooking period, and then you just pull that out at the end and you've got all the beautiful lemongrass fragrance and flavour left in there, but the fibrous leaves are gone. So what we're going to do is tie them up into little bundles, just like this one here, which is just folded over and tied in two knots. And then I will put those in the freezer. And whenever I want either lemongrass tea or I want to add some lemongrass fragrance to a tom yum soup or a hot and sour soup, um, to curries, um, just anything that you want to add the lemongrass flavor to, but not the chopped lemongrass, the leaves will do it. It's beautiful as a lemongrass tea. So what we do here is just grab three or four pieces of the lemongrass and I haven't left this to wilt so if you do leave it overnight just to get really soft and get rid of the sharpness um, that will make it a lot easier. But just scrunch it just a little bit so that it's easier to tie. Fold it in half. Tie one knot. Just like that. And then tie another knot. Just like that. Neaten off the end, and then you have your beautiful little lemongrass tied up thingy <laughs> that you can put into your cooking or your tea. So there we have our lemongrass tie up bouquet garnies and our lemongrass. If anyone knows what these are called, because they will have a name because they're all over Southeast Asia, <laughs> let me know. I forgot to show you too that I did wash those leaves really thoroughly so make sure you do that. So you can see here this is our sort of our seedling raising area. We have a whole heap of pots that are just plain filled with dirt so that when I want to plant something there's minimal effort. We've got avocados coming up from seed so I do grow a lot of stuff by seed. Um, I know that there is a risk um, with some things that they won't be true, but I don't care. It's like free and I love doing it, so I'm just going to do it and see what happens. But yeah, these are avocados that are coming up. This is the taro that I got from the markets the other day. 
and you can see it's all got new shoots on it already which is very exciting. We've got some betel leaf that I've just planted. These are just miniature elephant ears from the bush. These are um, West Indian limes. The lady that I got them off has grown them from seed multiple times. This is some coriander that I'm planting up for some people, sawtooth coriander. I just planted that up so it's a bit wilty at the moment but that will come up. Some Tongan spinach and Okinawa spinach and longevity spinach. And then these are Davidson plums. And that's just a random ratty passion fruit. So the Davidson plums were grown from seed, but I need to get them much bigger before I can plant them in the garden. That's my really lazy way of planting papaya seeds. Because we have so many papayas and so many papaya seeds, and most of them the chickens will eat, I still just grab handfuls and just chuck it on top of pots and grow pots with multiple seedlings in them. I then plant them out when I get the energy so these were planted two days ago and they look a little bit sick at the moment but they are going to stand up straight and give us more papaya. So if you look here, these are the lemongrass and you saw I showed you before how it had the roots on the end. So you can see there, when they're at that stage, and you can see that one, Sometimes when you're cooking, you can't be bothered going out and planting at the same time. So just grab a jar of water. When you cut the top part of the lemongrass off from about there, put the bottom half into a jar of water, just like that one there. And that will grow roots. And that can sit in there for weeks. It could sit in there for months and you would still be able to plant it when you feel like it. And then when you do feel like it, you can see here, these are ones that we've planted and they're starting to get all new shoots around them. And that only took like two weeks. That's about two weeks of growth. So I would guess in another two weeks, they'll be ready to plant out into the garden and we will have even more lemongrass. There's a couple of ways that you can grow your lemongrass. You can grow it from seed. I believe that takes a long time, but I've never tried it. And I am going to try it with those seeds that you saw. Um, the other thing you could do is you could go to a nursery or a hardware store and buy one plant, get it going, and then break that up into multiple plants. And the other way to do it, which is the cheapest way to do it, is to go to your supermarket or your market and buy a stalk of lemongrass as if you were going to eat it. But just make sure as much of this bottom bit down here on it, and then if you can see any lines around it, so, so what you're looking for is maybe not dark, but just any of these sort of lines, and that's where the roots will come out. So in the supermarket or the market, if you can get a bulb that's got just one of those lines around the bottom, that is where the roots will come out. So that means you can just get a cheap stalk of lemongrass, pop it in a jar of water, let it grow roots, and then plant it, and that will be your first plant. And then you can divide and conquer with lemongrass because it will grow so quickly. So then basically all you do is just shove your lemongrass in there and that is your next plant. But yeah, that's another two, four, six, seven and that will be eight lemongrass plants. Yay! You can see here we've got some more passion fruit seedlings. These ones are jackfruit and then that's more of the West Indian lime. So we all know by now that I am not capable of walking past a papaya tree without taking in some of that fruit. That looks so beautiful. It's such a pretty plant. Just the shadows that it cast on the ground around it are beautiful. Did you bark at the postman, Lexi? Lexi, did you bark at the postman? Sheila, did you bark at the postman? Did you bark at the postman? Do you feel bad at all? It's not good. So somewhere in this mess of lemongrass is my hori hori, which I have lost. So I'm going to find that. So that is it. That is how we grow lemongrass in the beautiful tropics of far north Queensland, Australia. We really love growing lemongrass. If you use any amount of lemongrass, it is worth growing if you feel like it and only if you feel like it like and subscribe but most importantly stay calm in the farm